Thank you for listening to KSO Today, your free daily podcast from K-State Online. We'll talk Kansas State football, basketball, recruiting, and everything going on at KSO, your Rivals.com home for Kansas State athletics. This podcast will move rather quickly, so let's not waste any more time in kicking off another installment of KSO Today. Welcome to a cold, icy, windy January 17th, 2020. Well, that depends on where you live, I guess. But here in Manhattan, I can see nothing but ice over my window and red is home from school because it's canceled. Uh, And another edition of KSO Today. No games last night, of course, but we did record a full-length regular edition of the KSO show from Tall Guys Tap House last night. We were a little surprised... Well, I mean, not that surprised. I think they're somehow there about 80% of the time that we are. But surprised that we saw Taylor Bratt and Colin Klein as soon as we walked in. Got a chance to talk to them uh, both briefly. They were with a number of mid-year enrollees who probably just got to Manhattan recently. Got my first look uh, in person at Will Howard. Uh, didn't really talk to him or that kind of stuff. His face looked intense was the note I wrote to myself. Uh, he looked a little bit different in person than I thought. He looked like a quarterback for sure. Um, but saw a number of those guys there last night, and that was exciting to see. Tallgrass Tap House, of course, is one of our sponsors. Um, this show in particular is sponsored by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance that I tell you every day. PSB has 10 branch locations and 17 ATMs in the state of Kansas. Six of those are in Manhattan alone. Certainly worth looking into for any banking needs or questions you have. That's certainly People's State Bank. Also, Legacy Insurance. Again, talked about we had the KSO show last night. Taylor Bratt came on. Uh, we talked hoops for a while. It was really cool to have Taylor Bratt come on. He he offered to, and I said, yeah, man, if you want to, we'll start the show with you. So if you haven't listened to it, you don't have to listen very long. I think he says the first words of the show. We asked him a few questions, myself and, and Flanders and, and Jimmy or KSU underscore fan do. Flanders asks him a, a funny slash borderline ridiculous question, but Taylor Bratt tries to answer it. It was pretty cool to see. Um, but it was nice to have him there. Nice to have him talk about why he was there, what recruits he had with him. Recruits is the wrong word. They're signees now what players you had with them, why that's important. And it was neat to see, you know, last night, to see those kids, to see them get to start to get acclimated to the city of Manhattan. And I think it's a pretty cool place in Tall House. So that was neat. Um, the rest of the show, we didn't even plan on having Taylor Brad on, of course. We thought we just would sit down as a group of three guys with myself and, and Jimmy and Flando and, and talk hoops. We ended up doing that, of course. It's a very basketball-heavy podcast. You know, I know we don't throw, you know, perhaps the emotion or, or fan, you know, type of anger into our analysis of the hoops programs that maybe people want to hear sometimes, but I don't think that's the job of a media member. Um, but I, and I think we give you a relatively good analysis of what's going on, what's going wrong, what needs fixed, you know, et cetera. So maybe give it a listen if you haven't already. I really appreciated the work that Fan and, and Jimmy did on that. We also go, I said Fan and Jimmy, that's the same person. Fan and Flando did on that. We also go pretty in depth, I think, with our West Virginia preview. Give our predictions to close that show out. You'll see a lot more prediction and preview work for West Virginia coming up here. Really on Saturday from Fan, myself, K-State Athletics Communications, since it's a lot of great info we share. So you'll see all that on the site tomorrow. Then, of course, full coverage will all be there at Bramlage when K-State plays West Virginia. I think, again, by far the best team as K-State has played this year. I think it's a very, very challenging matchup. And I'll be interested to see how how that goes for K-State. Today on the site, uh, I almost hate to say this because I like it to be a surprise. But I do think we'll probably run an OTR today. And off the record, we haven't done that for a while. We've gotten pretty much in the habit, like anybody else, I guess, of just sharing stuff as we get it. And that's all well and good. But we want to keep that feature going every so often. So very Derek Young heavy. Appreciate the work he's done on that. We'll have that out sometime today. Um, I know we also have another Hoops recruiting notebook sitting in the admin that I'm going to edit and release You know, after I finish up my work here. Uh, onto the site. So that will be great to see. I, I believe it's a lot to talk about right now with Hoops Recruiting. If you look back at the last day on the site, really, you could see that KSO show we talked about. Taylor Bratt surprises us and spends the first 10 minutes or so with us. And Flanders, who's writing that Hoops Notebook today, had a Hoops Big Board yesterday that talked about the pieces to be looking for for the class of 2020 still. I imagine the Recruiting Notebook will be looking both at 2020 and perhaps even 2021. Uh, I do want to have something to talk about that's not really just, again, advertising what's on our site or what to look for on there. I think it's nice to have that information out there. Um, so I thought to myself, I want to write, have a topic to discuss on this Friday. I saw the mid-year enrollees last night. I thought to myself, I could discuss what three positions, you know, I think true freshmen could certainly play next year for K-State in football, obviously. Now, 
as Chris Kleiman and his staff have proven, they'll play him anywhere. So I don't have to limit to three positions. They will take full advantage of the redshirt rule if they can. If a guy is remotely ready to play, they'll give him some snaps and use that without burning his redshirt. So you don't have to limit it to three. It could be far more. But there's three that I really came up with that I'm, I'm particularly interested to see. The first one is a bit of a swerve because I did put quarterback, but I mean specifically backup quarterback. Um, I know an OTR because I've seen it. DY shares some info and insight he has about the backup quarterback battle and, and what's going on there. And Will Howard's not, not the focus of that, to be quite honest, and rightfully so. But I think that's a position where you could see a true freshman play is the backup quarterback. He'll be here. Obviously, he's here right now. So he'll be here for the spring. He'll be here uh, to prepare through fall camp like everybody else. We'll only be you know a year behind knowledge of the system. This isn't a place where all these quarterbacks have been in the same system for three, four years. It's new for a lot of them. So I'm not predicting Will Howard to be the backup quarterback. In fact, I wouldn't predict him to be, but I think he will have a chance to to do so and earn that job. And he may play some next year. So I can't not mention quarterback when I'm thinking about a possibility where a true freshman could have a meaningful role at the backup quarterback spot. Uh, two is running back. Now, K-State brings back a ton of true, uh, well, now redshirt freshman running backs and Joe Irvin, Jarcadia Wright, Clyde Price, assuming he stays at the same position, and then Thomas Grayson. So there's plenty there. Harry Trotter, of course, returns. But I would be surprised if either Keon Nozzi or Deuce Vaughn do not play at least some next year. I'd be shocked if they don't, to be quite honest. Uh, they may maintain their red shirt, but I don't, I don't think it has to happen. You know, I, th I think they would probably rather get them red shirts and not play both of them than have six sophomore running backs in 2021. So I think they'll be careful about that a little bit. But those are two guys that are going to offer such different things to the offense. I don't know, you know, outside of Joshua Youngblood, perhaps what Keenan Garber can do. And I'm probably not being fair enough to like Phillip Brooks and maybe some others. I still think, though, Keon Mosey and Deuce Fawn will immediately represent two of the best playmakers from an explosiveness perspective that K-State has on its offense the second that they step into a practice. Both can help out at receiver or in the slot. As small as Deuce Vaughn is, and K-State coaches have told us this too, he's been split out wide by his high school a bunch, and K-State will look at him there too, not just in the slot. So um, two guys that will be running backs but could help elsewhere, I think will have an excellent chance to perhaps get on the field as true freshmen. Would be stunned if we don't see them in some manner. Special teams too, you have to wonder about. I think cornerback too, you know, a lot's changed there. There's been some attrition at that position with some kids, you know, Logan Wilson, um, Kenyon Reed transferring out of the program or leaving the program early, some changes with who they were able to take or, or, or end up signing on signing day. So I think there's going to be an excellent chance for young people to play here. There's more than one option, but the one I wrote down and really am focused on is T. Denson. I know how highly K-State thought of him in the recruiting process, how desperately they wanted him. Uh, he was there last night at Tallgrass with the group. I think TJ Smith was too, if I remember correctly. Um, Will Swanson was. I don't want to name all the names because I'll forget them if I try to start naming them all, but there were a number of kids there last night. But I really think he's going to have a tremendous opportunity to play to play early. And I think at some point, I'm not saying it's going to be T. Denson next year, but K-State will start a true freshman at a position at some point relatively soon. You see it throughout college football. At the, you know, Elite programs do it all the time. Those are elite recruits, I understand. But it is a day and age where if a true freshman is the best player at a position for you, you may as well start him because he's going to be playing against a number of other young players. It's not all seniors out there anymore. So I think T. Denson is going to have a shot to be one of those guys. We'll see what happens, of course. It'll be really exciting to start talking more and more about football as we get close to spring football um, and talking about the second year of the Chris Kleiman era because it will be fascinating, of course. Um, still some coaching news that we are speculating about on the message board, the same one I hinted out yesterday, not a new name or anything like that. You'll also see that addressed more specifically in OTR as well as some possible scheduling news that we've continued to hit at as well. Um, just hasn't come out yet. It will. It will any time, I would imagine, for sure. But... That will pretty much wrap me up for my first week of KSO today, my first Monday through Friday. I hope you all have enjoyed it. Going into the future, I'm going to involve other KSO staff members in this. I'd like to give a day to Grant Flanders, to give a day to Derek Young, to get some insight from others. You know, KSU underscore fan, Chris Nelson, Logan Mance, um, Natalie Hall even. I'm forgetting names, I'm sure, and I apologize for that. But this won't be just my voice rambling on all the time in the future. We will have others. But for this week, it was just me. I appreciate all of you who have tuned in and listened, whether it's on YouTube, Podbean, on the website. If you're listening on YouTube and you're not subscribed, I'm going to say this every pod, and I'm sorry if it's annoying. Please hit that red button for us and give us your subscription. It's really, really helpful. Either way, appreciate your time. Appreciate your listening. Have a great weekend. Enjoy K-State West Virginia tomorrow. Enjoy your Friday.